that I think we're seeing in Mormon culture is a recognition that we have a rhetoric of certainty that is imprisoning to many people. Uh, many people who feel they can't stand up and testify of the kind of spiritual sources of knowledge and conviction that many, many have. And I think that's a, that's a good thing, right? That's a healthy thing, yeah. that we can all find ways to testify of, of our devotion in a language that is authentic and appropriate to us. Um, but you set yourself up in opposition to more conventional, right, paradigms yeah. of spirituality. And, and you single out Fiona's in my book in particular. And you do it so gently and graciously. <laughs> Only because nobody else could ever do so as, <laughs> as plainly as you and Fiona do. But, uh, but I want to talk about this because um, I think you raise some absolutely fantastic questions and challenges to mm -hmm. some of, of our own positions and descriptions. And you quote, so that's going to be my justification for quoting. Okay. Um, our, um, this was a talk, I guess, uh, I gave at BYU. But, but I want to quote this, and then, then we'll have a conversation about it. I said back in, I don't know, 2004, I think, I am convinced that there must be grounds for doubt as well as belief in order to render the choice more truly a choice, and therefore more deliberate and laden with personal vulnerability and investment. One is, it would seem, always provided with sufficient materials out of which to fashion a life of credible conviction or dismissive denial. We are acted upon, in other words, by appeals to our personal values, our yearnings, our fears, our appetites, and our egos. What we choose to embrace, to be responsive to, is the purest reflection of who we are and what we love. That is why faith, the choice to believe, is in the final analysis an action that is positively laden with moral significance. And you take issue with that, and you, you posit that, at least in your case, you're not sure that calling faith a choice works. So explain a little bit what you mean by that. Because my, my belief is that you and I are much closer on this issue than, I think we probably than, are. than maybe appears. Yeah. yeah. I guess the simplest way to approach it is just to say, um, I, don't, I don't experience belief as a choice, right? I, you I don't, use a magnificent word instead, right? You, you talk about puzzlement. Puzzlement, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, part of this, th this idea of, um, of choice, I think, is resonant for many people, especially for those who do um, ex experience a transition of, of doubt, where their belief is called into question. That has never, that was not my journey. That was not my journey. I, I didn't experience a, some sort of drastic change in outlook. I didn't encounter new information that called everything into question. Um, so I have never felt myself to be in a place of, of crisis that needed to be resolved. Right. Instead, I just felt in some ways like I lived in a different kind of world um, where belief wasn't relevant to the things that really mattered to me. And I've, I've thought about why this is the case. You know, do I believe this? Do I believe that? I could come up with answers to that, but it doesn't seem like it would really change how I live my life one way or the other. Belief, for me, is a kind of intellectual exercise and, so, and, um, and intellectual experience that happens to me. I, I can't really, for example, choose whether I want to believe in global warming or not. Right? To me, that's something that happens at a deeper level that I can't really talk myself into or out of. That's, it's a kind of process of judgment and identity that happens below the conscious level. Um, so belief has its place, but it doesn't seem to impact the deep sources of my being and my identity. And maybe thinking about that passage there, I've thought about why, why it is that that doesn't resonate for me. It may be the way that agency seems to be centered and concentrated in the individual. There are times when I have felt powerful as an individual person making an individual choice, but the times when I have felt most powerful, when I felt like I'm acting on the world in the most significant ways, are the times when I'm working together in a community, right? when I'm working through and with other agents, other people. 
And it's that coming together as a, as a group and working things out. It doesn't always look pretty. It can look, it can be very messy sometimes. It can be hard sometimes. It can be painful sometimes. For me, those are the experiences. For example, learning, I come from a very big family, oldest of 11 children. How, are, how, how do we continue to be a family as a group of different adults, right, with different interests and different priorities? That's hard. But that is what makes me feel powerful and makes me feel as though I'm acting on the world in a really significant way. Um, and choice doesn't really come into that a lot, right? Choice doesn't play a big role in, um, in, in, in that kind of communal endeavor. So I think if I were to try to narrow it down where the difference might be, it may be in that understanding of where choice really is located. Okay.